Welcome to the Math 1 lesson summary video for the task Checkerboard Borders. Um, the purpose of this task is to remind students that different algebraic expressions can be used to represent the same visual pattern and to help them interpret the meaning of the algebraic expressions they create. So for this particular task, the best way for me to recap it for you is to just go into the task itself. Um, obviously, we won't be able to have the rich discussions that your students would have had in class, but there's no better way than to just look at the task for this one. Um, this is a develop understanding task, so it's important to keep in mind the purpose, um, which is to develop students thinking around these ideas um, and not to become fluent with them immediately. So we have a cafeteria scenario. Um, the school administration plans to replace the tile in the cafeteria. They want to have a checkerboard pattern of tiles two rows wide as a surround um, for the five by five set of tiles in the center. So that's the key is that what we're looking at is creating a border for this space here in the interior, which is five by five. And we want to find the number of colored tiles. Obviously, you could just count them um, and that'd be simple, but for larger scenarios, which is what we're eventually going to be extending this to, that's going to be very inefficient method. So we want to think of a more efficient way to think about it. So I'm going to show you two possible ways students might think about this task. So one way is to think, well, I know the total space here. So if I look at the full square, that's 9 by 9. So 9 times 9, that's 81 total tiles. I know that the 5 by 5 in the middle, 25 tiles, are blank. So 81 minus 25 will to tell me the total number of tiles in the border. But not every tile is filled in. It's alternating every other tile is filled in. So once I know the total number, I'll need to divide it by 2. And so 81 minus 25 is 56. And 56 divided by 2 is 28 colored tiles. And that's one valid way of thinking about it. There are many, many ways. I'm not going to be able to cover them all in this video. But another way to think about it would be to look at it and say, OK, well, I see a top and a bottom. And then I see two sides left over. So in the top, there's 9. In the bottom, there's 9. Or in other words, I could just put 2 times 9 colored tiles. And on the sides, there's 5 each. So I can put 2 times 5. And so that's going to be 18 plus 10, which is also 28 colored tiles. And so those are both great strategies. There's many others, um, but those are just two. And they look at the same problem in totally different ways in terms of visualization. Now, the goal of this task is to extend this type of thinking and generalize it in an algebraic way. So if we look at the next page, it says the contractor that was hired to lay the tile in the cafeteria is trying to generalize a way to calculate the number of colored tiles needed for a checkerboard border surrounding a square of tiles with any dimensions. So any dimensions, meaning now we want to think about the center being n by n. And so what that means is that in our concrete case here, n was equal to 5 because the center was 5 by 5. So how can we take these patterns that we did and this way of thinking that we did and generalize it? So let's start with the pink method. Well, if I just look at the center tile, Again, I, I was finding the area of the center. So if it's n by n, the area of the center is n squared. This length is n. And then I have two more tiles above and two more tiles below. So the total distance here is n plus 4. And that's why in the previous problem, I had 9, which was 4 bigger than 5. And so the total area is going to be n plus 4 squared minus n squared. And then because that's going to be the area of the perimeter, the border, but then because every other tile is shaded, we had to divide that by 2. 
And so you can see when n equals 5, as it was in the previous problem, we get 5 plus 4 squared minus 5 squared over 2, which is 9 squared minus 5 squared over 2, which is 81 minus 25 divided by 2. Well, does that look familiar? Sure enough, does. That's exactly the calculation that we did here. So you can see that it's just this is a generalization of the concrete case that we did in the previous problem. This is the most complex formula that I think can be developed uh, for this problem. So let's look at the blue one because it's a, it's a little bit simpler and easier to see. So for the blue one, again, we were chunking the spaces. So we had this top space. And so for this top space, I'm just going to think about that for a second. Imagine I just shifted all these down one so that all the colored tiles are in one space. It's just a little trick I can do. Now, how many colored tiles would there be in this top space? Well, there would be n plus 4 colored tiles because that's how long this is since it's a square. The side we've already established is n plus 4. So across the entire top is also n plus 4. But I also have the bottom space down here. So I can't just do n plus 4. I have to do 2 n plus 4 colored tiles. And then in each of the side spaces, on the right side and the left side that remain, we're able to use the same kind of alternating imagination and establish that there will be n colored tiles in each of those spaces. But there's two such spaces, so we have 2n. And so this is a second formula that we can use to represent the situation. Again, when I plug in n equals 5, I get 2 times 9 plus 2 times 5, which is the exact same calculation that we did previously. So you can see that these formulas are equivalent. If you plug in 6 and 7 and 8 for n, you'll get the same output in each formula. And there are other formulas that can be developed in this task. And so the four main ones are listed here. So you can see the pink formula that I just walked you through and the blue one as well. Um, but there's also these other two that could be developed. And so my challenge to you would be to consider how you might be able to see those in the visualization, visualization of the pattern. Um, and then there's an exit ticket you can try here as well, students, if you want to pause the video and give that a shot. So we have... You've already paused the video and tried it. So you have uh, one by one tiles, and we're taking it all the way until there's an n amount of them. So we'd have n on top, n on the bottom, and then one on each side. So in total, that would be 2n plus 2 for the perimeter. All right, thanks for watching. Remember, this is a develop understanding task. You're going to get much more practice as you continue in the unit. And also, uh, if you need help specifically with the Ready, Set, Goes, please make sure to check out the Ready, Set, Go support video website in Canvas uh, for students. Thank you.